phone sizes seem to be getting bigger and bigger. But for the most part, software hasn't adapted for user convenience. Does Samsung finally have a solution? Hi everyone, Tao here. One UI is Samsung's new user interface for their smartphones. In Samsung's own words, it's made to focus, helping you focus on what really matters. The redesign basically shifts everything you typically interact with closer to the bottom. This is my review of Samsung's One UI. Let's dive right in. With any major change, you're going to piss some people off. What I'd like to do is ask friends and acquaintances who aren't considered techies for their thoughts on things. I showed them the new One UI icons and seriously, it was a 50-50 split. Some loved the simplicity while some called it a little too cartoonish. I personally find them to blend in much better when mixed with icons from Google and other popular apps. The old design, although striking, was just a little too aggressive. One UI icons come off more friendly and easier to recognize between the different apps. With that being said, I can understand why many may not like them. Almost every single person I spoke to agreed that shifting elements closer to the bottom of the phone is a great idea. The concept is amazing, but I have to say the execution needs some work. I'm sure they'll continue to tweak it, but uh, let me show you what I mean. So music controls on the lock screen are still placed way at the top. I'm hoping they move the music controls closer to the bottom. Maybe swap it with the unlock with fingerprint prompt that doesn't require any interaction. In the phone app, it's great that they move the keypad, recents, and contact menu buttons to the bottom. But if you click into recents or contacts, it doesn't follow the one UI change. My favorite contacts, ones that I would probably contact the most are all at the top. And even the add to contacts button is tucked all the way at the very top. There are quite a few examples of this, but you get the point. I have faith that Samsung will continue to iron these things out. The notification shade quick toggles are done very well, providing easier access to them. If you're using a Note 9, the corners don't seem to line up though, just putting that out there. Another thing to note is that the One UI reachability changes will only apply to the stock Samsung apps. So it's not going to solve any reach issues you're having in third-party apps. Samsung doesn't really have any control over that though. One UI introduced bottom-based gestures that allows you to show or hide gesture hints. I find the hints to be very distracting and immediately turn them off once I got used to the gestures. It's a good choice to keep the standard navigation bar as an option rather than force the gestures on everyone. Samsung even added a quick toggle if you want to quickly switch between gestures and the navigation bar. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I absolutely love Samsung's One Hand Operation Plus Edge-based gestures. It was a little disappointing that all the other GoodLock 2018 apps are not compatible for the time being. But hey, at least they got One Hand Operation Plus working. So which gestures do I prefer? One Hand Operation Plus is still my favorite since it's completely customizable. I do really like that the stock gesture for launching recent apps is instant, unlike One Hand Operation Plus which has a slight delay. There doesn't seem to be a way to quickly switch to a previous app if you hide the gesture hints. Although it does automatically center the previous app in recents which kind of works. Launching the Google Assistant is now done with a home swipe and hold. I also wish the stock gestures has some sort of haptic feedback to confirm when a gesture is registered. Speaking of the recent app screen, it got revamped and has a very similar look to what's on the Pixel 3. I like the way it looks visually, but we did lose some functionality. Even if you have the navigation bar enabled, long pressing the recent app button no longer launches multi-window. In the past, you could drag and drop app previews to the top or bottom to begin using split screen. That's now gone. The only way to launch split screen view is by pressing the icon above the app preview. I like to at least see Samsung move the icon to the bottom to make it easier to reach. For the time being, if you use split screen a lot, you could just create some app pairs to quickly launch your favorites. Everywhere you look, you're going to see rounded corners that blend with the curvy design of the physical phone. Looks aside, 
the biggest win for One UI is how improved the software and animations are. Notification pop-ups are more prominent now with refined animations. Switching quickly between apps has a pleasant slide in animation and doesn't stutter even if you do it quickly. The recent app animation is done very well. It feels fluid and looks great. Even scrolling through the app previews looks and feels nicer. Finally, Bixby Home no longer stutters when you swipe over to it. It was honestly a bad look for a device that cost as much as the S9 and Note 9. Glad they finally addressed it. The animation tweaks and just general improvements to the smoothness of the software really makes the phone more enjoyable to use and should make Samsung fans happy. The camera UI is redone and is now visually much more familiar coming from Google's own camera app on the Pixel 3. To zoom, you can no longer use the shutter as a slider, but instead slide over the tree icons on the Note 9. The tree icons represent normal and two times zoom. We also lost the dedicated video recording button, which now has its own mode. Pro mode video recording is also nowhere to be found. Hopefully they add it back in a future update. They replaced the video recording button with one to switch between the front and back cameras. I prefer it this way. Changing picture and video resolutions got more confusing and is sort of hidden. You have to actually click the highlighted resolution to enable a drop down menu. For my brief use, the selfie camera does seem to have less face smoothing and retains slightly more detail. I'll have to do more testing to see if there are really any notable improvements. Let me know if you want me to put the Note 9 camera with its One UI update against the Pixel 3 for an updated comparison. With it being such a large update, it would be a very lengthy video for me to cover everything. Instead, I'll just highlight the most notable changes. We now have a new charge sound that honestly took me a while to get used to. I really like it now. System-wide dark mode is perfect for those of you who can't stand white and want to squeeze out more battery. It's also really impressive how quickly it themes everything right from the quick settings toggle. By default, you only get app icons for notifications on the lock screen. This is probably a change for security. To turn them back on, you need to head into settings, lock screen, notifications, and change view style to either brief or detailed. When responding to messages from the drop-down notifications, you can now see a continuous thread. I believe in the past, only the most recent message appeared. Correct me if I'm wrong. Samsung has adopted the screen rotation icon that pops up to quickly enable you to rotate the screen if you have screen rotation disabled. We also have this animation for the screen rotation toggle. We now have a trash can in the gallery. Photos don't get deleted right away anymore. They end up in the trash and will stay there for 15 days. After 15 days, they get deleted automatically. To access the trash, just hit the three dots and select trash. There's a new toggle in settings that allows you to reduce animations, which honestly makes the phone feel blazing fast. A bug I noticed is that when reduced animations is on, you can't quickly scroll through the recent apps. It stops at each app. I personally like the animations on anyways. My experience with One UI has been, for the most part, positive. I haven't run into any major bugs or glitches since installing it on both my Note 9 and S9. The biggest disappointment for me is that Good luck isn't compatible currently. Hopefully they can get it up and running soon. I also can't help but feel that One UI isn't 100% there yet, and that a lot of work is still being done behind the scenes to tidy things up for the next update. Don't get me wrong though, I really like the update and it's without a doubt a step forward. Anyways, if you've updated to One UI, what has your experience been like? If you're still waiting for the update, what feature of One UI are you most excited for? Don't be shy, share your thoughts in the comments section down below. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, peace. Bye.